In this video, Seth Juarez walks you through the steps of building reusable reports. Take it away, Seth. Thanks for that introduction. My name is Seth Juarez. I'm a technical evangelist for Developer Express. Today we're going to talk about building reusable reports. Some of our clients use a three-tiered architecture when building their applications. Those of you doing it this way will be familiar with this diagram. At the bottom we have a series of classes that form the structure of our data. Our services are sort of the brains of the application that are concerned with how to take data out and format it in such a way that these client uh, portions of the application can use it. The reports, when you separate them out, are really only concerned with displaying the data inside of a report. So they, they do no, there's no intelligence in, these, in, these, in this particular part of the application. What I'm gonna do today is I'm gonna show you how to separate these three areas in a way that will allow you to use this common report substructure to be used in any of the client technologies that we have. When you install our tool set, you get this demo center. And in this demo center, there's, there's some examples of how to build extra reports. Today, we're gonna to be copying this particular report, a table report of order details for a particular customer order. Okay, let's go ahead and get started. I've opened Visual Studio and we're going to create a new project. For this particular video, we're going to use a Windows Form application and I'm gonna call it Northwind. In order to create the separation of these three areas, I'm gonna create three folders. The first folder we'll call data. The second folder we'll call services. And the last folder we'll call reports. The first task that we have is to generate the model from an existing Northwind database. The way I'm gonna do that is by adding a new item and this item will be an ADO.NET Entity Data Model. I'm going to call it Northwind Model. We're going to create it directly from the database, so we have to establish a new connection. And I'm going to map directly to the Northwind database. What it's going to do now is read the schema of the database and we're going to map directly to the tables. This will create a diagram with all of the relationships that existed within the tables. This diagram is very useful for looking at relationships between entities but what we have to do now is create the class structure that mimics this model. The way to do that is to add a code generation item and we're going to use a entity object generator and I'm going to call it model. This will generate all of the classes necessary to map to the database and take the information from the database and put it into these special classes. Okay. A reminder of the report we're building, we're building this products report based upon a customer order number. So we're going to build a service that will be able to provide that data. So we're going to add a new item and we're going to add this interface called iProductService. Inside of it, we're going to have a public method that returns products. Now it's our job to create the actual implementation of this method. So let's add a new class and let's call it product service. This service class will implement the iProduct service. I'm going to go ahead and get rid of this and add the appropriate namespace. 
Okay, the first thing we need to do is we need to establish a connection to the database. And the way we're going to do that is we're going to store the connection string inside of the product service every time the class is spun up. So we're going to create a private string variable that stores the connection string. Then every time the product service is spun up, the constructor will fill in the connection string. The connection string was filled in for us in this app.config file when the Northwind entities were read in. All we need to do is pull the information out of this uh, config file. And to do that, we're going to add a special reference to the system.configuration. And then we're going to we're going to map that to this connection string by using the configuration manager. Then we're going to pull the connection strings out. And then we're going to get the connection string out of that. Now the name of this connection string corresponds directly to this. So we're going to copy it and fill it right in. The next step is we have to get the products. We're going to instantiate a context object. And we're going to pass in the connection string because that's one of the overloads for the constructor. And then what we're going to do is we're going to create a link query to pull the products out by order ID. And a little reminder, the order detail is what's going to have the link to the products. So we're going to, going to do a join on order detail together with products and filter it by a particular order ID. This is what this looks like. Okay, that is our method for getting the products by an order ID. The last part is actually building the report. We'll go to the reports folder and we're going to do project, add new item, and we're going to add an extra report and we're going to call it order details report. The interesting thing about this particular report is that we're binding to an array of products. And the way you bind to it is a little bit different than maybe you're used to. We're going to go to the data source and we're going to select add project data source and we're going to bind to objects, an array of objects. When we hit next, it's going to give us all of the objects that we can bind to. Let's pick from the Northwind data namespace the product class. Let's hit next. Once we do that, Extra Reports is smart enough to know the fields that are available or properties that are available for this particular report given this object binding source. Let's add an XR table. And we can drag the fields directly onto the cells. We'll add a couple of fields here. Let's add two more. Let's add units in stock and units on order. And then we'll move this over a little bit. Okay, we'll bring up the bottom margin up and we're going to add a title using the XR label. Let's make this feel a little bit bigger and make the font 
a little larger so that we can see it as a title. The last part is now providing the report with the appropriate data. Let's go to the order details report and view the code and we're going to do the simplest thing by adding a, a method that we can use to directly pass in the products. Then we set the data source of this particular report. equal to the products that we passed in. Now let's see how all the pieces work together. Let's click on the form and let's add a button. We're going to be doing three things in this part of the application. We're going to be first getting the data. Second is we're going to pass data to the report. And then last is we're going to actually show the report. In the first instance, we just used the service method we generated previously to get the products associated with an order. Now for this particular method, notice we need an order ID. So let's take a look at the database and see what order ID we can use. Let's choose 10 to 48 as our first one. Okay, now that we have our products, we pass it to a new instance of the order details report. We call a load method that we generated previously. and pass in the products that we've loaded. Lastly, we show the report. And here is what happens. We click our button and here is our report. Okay, to summarize, what we did is we separated the data, which, is, which, which, which was Entity Framework in this instance, the services, and the actual reports. Notice that the services and the reports did not depend on each other. And the only thing that the reports depended on was the actual classes that represented the data. Let's hit stop here and let's see all three of those areas. Notice that the reports depended on the data as did the services, but it was the actual form that controlled what data the reports got from the services. Okay, if there's any questions, please feel free to get a hold of me. My name is Seth Juarez. I'm Technical Evangelist for DevExpress. You can reach me on Twitter or via email and hopefully we'll continue this series into the future. Great demo, Seth. We look forward to more from you. Thanks for watching and thank you for choosing DevExpress.